just seconds left on the clock. This is for the state championship. He shoots the three. When you get into these mountains, usually your small communities are coal mining towns. And coal miners work hard. They don't make a lot of money. Most of the time, the, a community that depends on coal is a poor community. And they look for some way that they can say, hey, we're as good as anyone in the state. All right, you hit him hard, Antoine. Let's finish this one. Don't find him, but keep him in front. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. All right, good chance to double team. Get on it, get on it. All right, cover it up, cover it up, cover it up. Match it and cover it. All right, all right. All right, in the hole. Good job, nothing wrong with that. That's where you want to bring the ball to, right in there. Tight, tight. Roll it tight and roll it tough. Let's go. Get ready now, Tim, get ready. Everybody's got to have a little hope. And everybody's got to feel like there's some good things about their town and their community. And the one thing that we've got in Clay County are two things. We've got great basketball, and we've got great people. All right, that's what to be patient, Antoine. Nice job showing some patience, all right. Well, my mom played in the late 70s, early 80s. My dad played for coach from 76 to 80, and they went to the state tournament twice. And my two first cousins played a key part. They both started on this team. Everybody in my family's played for Clay County. All right, down and ready. Me and my dad talk about how Coach Keith was back when he played and how he is now. My dad said that some of us couldn't have played because Coach Keith was so hard All back right. then. I mean, right. dad said he's lightened up a little bit and stuff. I'd always, that always worried me when a guy guarded me with no teeth and a beard and slobbered all the time. I can't go, He said, come on, son. <laughs> it worried me. We didn't have a drive-in. We didn't have a walk-in show. Uh, so about the only thing we had for entertainment was the basketball games. At that time, we didn't have a football team. So the whole emphasis, the whole focus was on basketball. And at that time, I said, man, the one thing I want to do is I want to play pivot for Clay County. And fortunately, when I got to be a junior in high school, I was playing pivot for Clay County. Ball's on the point. He's sitting right there. All right, down to him. I meet him right there. So you're wait, you're waiting and letting him come right here and getting you right here. So that when you handle right here, get ready, Jason. Get ready. Pound me. He's <laughs> 245 pounds and like a bear and hard to move around on. I was a tough defensive player and a hard-nosed rebounder. Every now and then I got a bucket. Hold it a second. Fred, move out of the way. Get in here, Benj. Right there where he can't come in. Don't get off this way, because if he does, he'll raise that foot, he'll hook right back and move you back. This way he can't move you. Get that, get that rump right on that, right setting right on that leg. Hands clean where you get no foul calls. Sitting right strong, strong. Hey, I've had three heart attacks. I've had open heart surgery. I've had balloon surgery. I've got, have I had metal stents put in my heart? I've got 27% of a normal heart. But I don't want to. I don't want to sit down and retard. Ah, you playing, you playing tartar and a booger, right? We got about 10 plays left here, and you got till Monday to re relax. You ought to absolutely key yourself right now these last 10 plays, because you won't die. If you do, it'll be the biggest funeral that ever was. Ball player die out here practicing law, and everybody come to the funeral. It'll be the biggest thing out in Clay County this year. Let's go. Be ready. Hit him hard. Patient till you get what you want. All right. Okay, come in here. Come here. That's a lot of improvement from yesterday, right? Yeah. We're 25% better than we was our first day's practice. Now, we won't make that much every day, but every day that we come in here, every time we walk on this floor, it's just like walking up steps. We go up one step, we get a little bit better. Another step, another step. Time we get to March, we'll be up to the top of the steps. Let's go. All right. One, two, three, run! Good day's work.
Ever since my freshman year, my dream had been finally be on that real varsity team, you know, the team that represents the school completely and the team that gets written about in the newspaper, the team that wins the state championship. I've often thought about, you know, coming out of the locker room, you know, and just getting announced, being on the team and, you know, at guard number four, Will Parton or whatever and all that. And that's just stuff, you know, that I think about. And... To see so many kids try out and so many kids want to be a part of a program that when they finally do make the team, it, it means a lot to them. You know, we're not running a church league or a recreational league. I mean, this is high school basketball, and here at Ballard High School, you know, we are uh, pretty high profile. We're highly ranked. Uh, we're getting some national attention. We've got some big time players here, and it's not all about having fun. Good, good, that's okay. As a new coaching staff coming in, we're trying to establish how we want the program to be run. Ballard is one of the programs in Kentucky. The fans don't expect you to win. They demand that you win and win big. And it's been that way at Ballard uh, forever. And there's no honeymoon period for Chris Renner. He's got to come in and win right now and win big uh, to live up to the, the fans' expectations. I could not have dreamed, and I didn't dream that I'd be in this situation a year ago. I never thought I would have been married. Uh, but a week and a half or two weeks ago, I, I got married. And I never envisioned that I would be coaching basketball at Ballard High School. I pledge my life and love to you. For the longest time, I've had a major dislike for Ballard High School uh, because we were never able to beat them, and they've been such a, such a great program. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, here I am, um, October 14th, and we're ready to start tryouts tomorrow, and I'm the coach at Ballard High School. We'd love to keep everybody here, but it's just not possible. Um, all the coaches here, we've all tried out for different sports at the high school level. Um, myself, early on, my, my first year got cut, so uh, I know what it feels like. It's nothing personal. I mean, we have tough decisions that we have to make. I almost convinced myself that I did indeed make it. And I was just thinking, just looking at the positions and the players we had and just a numbers game, I thought that I would slip right in, just barely slip in, maybe like 15th spot or something, 14th spot maybe. You've got your top players, and then you've just got a group of guys that are all uh, bunched up together. And you have to make a decision on who you're going to keep. I, th I would say 12 would be the number you'd want to look at. And then that will allow us room for football or for freshmen. Bottom line is you're, you're affecting kids' lives. I remember that morning I could barely eat. I just realized I had to know. I, I remember so vividly getting out of my car, walking through the parking lot, walking into the gym door. I right, grabbed that list. I saw it. It was like very small print. I didn't see a name. It looked like mine. I just looked up. I was like, and just kind of did double take maybe. And um, I was kind of, my son just kind of dropped and I was just like, whoa. I remember my dad said he wanted me to call him, but as soon as I found out, so I tried to find a pay phone. So I walked around again and just kind of walked around, just kind of thinking. I remember our JV coach saying, we're all so equal and how, how are we going to decide among you guys? And I was, my number wasn't called. It felt almost like a dream, but I knew it was real. I knew I didn't make it. Everybody's really excited about the year. Um, and as far as the community goes, there's a lot of talk about our team and the student body, the staff, and everything. So everybody's expecting a really good year. Of course, in the fall, I spend early fall, I spend at, at football games, and inevitably, uh, by mid-season, people will start coming up to the press box asking, "Who's going to be number one in basketball? Who's Mr. Basketball? Uh, who's Miss Basketball?" And it and it starts. The uh, build-up is always one of the 
best parts of it because everybody's got a shot, you know, in, in November. But for the fan, you're anticipating, hey, another season, and it's just like the springtime, life comes back into the flower, and you, you got uh, three months of, you know, basketball again. So it, it's a pretty exciting feeling. It just feels a void in you, you know? Got it, got it, get on the floor! Get on the floor! Get on the floor! Yes, yes! I, I love the game. You know, and uh, it, it, it's just, just beauty, you know. It's kind of been my trademark. I guess I started doing it since um, in the seventh grade. I uh, don't really know why. I do it every game day, so usually every Tuesday and Friday, so. Well, today's a special day because it's going to kick off our season. Um, we open up with Eastern tonight at 7.30. And uh, we're just kind of getting ready for the big game. I'm having some butterflies. I'm getting kind of anxious. I'm just ready to get this started. Been waiting a long time. I, you know, honestly, during the middle of the night, a couple times I woke up and I, I could tell I had basketball on my mind. I'm uh, thinking about some of the players or thinking about certain situations or whatever. Anytime you get to a new season and first game of the season, you get excited and, and you're just kind of you know, a little kid and you're just ready to go. And that's the way I felt this morning. And it's going to be a, a big crowd. So not only are we opening up our season, we're opening up the season with probably one of the biggest rivals that, that Ballard could open up with. Now, fellas, I'm going to tell you, man, the, the crowd's coming in. It's going to be exciting. You, you all have an opportunity tonight. Okay? You have an opportunity. When, when people leave this gym tonight, we're probably going to have every school in Jefferson County represented here with one fan. And when they leave here tonight, they're going to tell 10 other people about the game tomorrow. Bruins basketball. And it's not going to be anything you all say. It's going to be something you do. And I want people to walk out of this gym saying, I don't think we can play with them. And you need to leave that impression on the coaches. You need to leave that impression on the fans. Now, if I didn't think you all were capable of doing that, I wouldn't say this. But I'm saying, you are capable of it. But if you play half speed, you're not a very good basketball team. I'll help you with the three. If I'm the lead, if you're way back here and, and you know we're coming this way and the ball's here and the kid lets one fly, I'll give the three-point signal, mm -hmm. but it's yours to do this or do this. And vice versa. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Bench decorum coaches, you know, they're, they're, they're going to have fun out there as we are. Uh, let's watch each other's back. I mean, let's be the best team on the floor. Okay. Uh, you know what you'll listen to, and I know what I'll listen to. But let's cover each other's back and take care of that. Sounds good, buddy. <laughs> Let's work hard. Let's just get after him. It should be a good one. It's a fun time, baby. Good time. Look yeah, forward to it, man. We have always loved the sport, and I was raised that way, and maybe it's because I'm from Kentucky. The night that Rob and I got married, we went to a UFL game. So, what can you say? And I was a cheerleader in high school, and um, went to state tournament. We, we always went to state tournament. I've been watching Will play basketball for 13 years. And I live and die with, you know, a mistake or excited over the success or an injury. Um, sometimes when he goes down, that's a real hard thing to watch. Will's been, been running point guard here at Ballard for the last two years, his sophomore and junior year. Uh, Will plays probably harder than most players in Jefferson County. Uh, Will gets more accomplished at the defensive end and in terms of pushing the ball down the floor than, than really any guard I've seen. 
in certain situations, Will's decision making is not very good. And he has a tendency to get out of control and to try and make maybe the fancy play over the, the solid play. And that's the biggest, biggest knock on Will right now. I don't always agree with the coach, but you know what? He probably wouldn't always agree with me as a mom. So um, it's, I think overall, okay. A basketball mom, you know, I think they're, they're probably no different than the tennis moms or the stage moms. Um, I think I don't get that wrapped up in it. I see a bigger picture than that for his life and for who he is. So I don't think I really am like that. Somebody else might think differently, but I don't think I am. I think I'm okay about that. They've only got five offensive rebounds. I thought it was more than that, but at the same time, I bet you they've all hurt us. Right. They're scoring more on offensive rebounds than us, and we have six, eight, six, nine, six, five. You all just, you big guys, you're getting your ass whooped. Bottom line, that's a fact. like that, you know, coming up with a victory, that's big. I mean, that, that's really big. We need to be prepared for that type of effort, not only from Eastern, but now from all of our opponents, fellas. You know, we're Ballard High School and there's all this hype about all these things about us, but at the same time, people want to knock us off. Enjoy this victory, fellas, because it was really nice. Good job, baby. Bless you. Cadillac. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Always a pleasure. <laughs> All right, good effort. Stop right along in there, make sure Tim has got him. When it, when it comes back around, you'll be hanging down your inside. When it comes back around, you'll be stepping out on 30. And remember, when the ball comes down, you tell Steven. He'll be sitting down in here then. You'll have Doug and Tim or Fred. Now, that's a little, that's a little hitch that we didn't get covered yesterday. But that's no problem. Get your defense ready, get ready to play. Let's go, now, Come on, guys, we got a chance right here. If you get down 8-2, 10-2, don't you let up. We'll come back on them. We're playing on our place, on our floor. We've been beat once here in the last 15 years. Let's go, boys. Don't want it to be twice. Let's go. Let's go get them. I always dreamed of having a son or daughter to be able to, you know, follow in my footsteps. And now, you know, it's just, it's just wonderful. I mean, <laughs> I just get teary-eyed, you know, just to think about it, you know. Like from day one, he always liked to play ball. He always wanted the ball in his hand. And where he's left-handed, Mommy always said, put this high ball on your right hand, you know. And I always tried to make him be a right-hander, but he ended up being a left-hander. <laughs> To me, I would just love to be out there on the floor, too, because it's just a feeling that you'll never, until you have wore the black and gold, you'll really never know how it really feels. But it's, it's wonderful.
His, his mommy always packed his uniform in his bag. We always wear the same underwear that we have wore since last year. We have the same T-shirt, and we still wear the striped sock. And mommy always, I always do that. And you know, he usually hugs me and says, "I love you, and I'm going to do good." And that's, you know, that's her. We always say that to each other. You know, he's really opened a lot of eyes because, you know, they always say it in grade school that he would never be able to play high school ball because he was so little. But, you know, I guess he got out there and worked and showed people what he could do. People, you know, who's not had their child under Bobby Keith, you know, they'll never, there'll never be nobody as great to me as he is. Uh, he's just a leader. He's, he's leading the cheers, you know, he's a cheering with them and you know and that they look over there you know and he's pumped up with them and that just to me that's special you know a man like that to coach her young and you know words cannot express you know i really you know i was so glad when he decided to come back i knew bobby loved basketball and it was the biggest part of his life but it didn't surprise me that he that he retired because of his health problems uh, but it didn't surprise me at all when he came back either. Uh, you can take the man out of coaching, but you can't take the coaching out of the man. And if you cut Bobby Keith open, you're going to find, you know, the basketball there. That That's him. Pretty soon you've hit enough golf balls. Pretty soon you've caught enough fish. And you say, hey, there's a little more to life than this. You miss a lot of things. Uh, you miss the comradeship of uh, your coaches. You miss the players because young players have a lot of exuberance in them. But that youthful zeal sort of adds a little vitality to you. Maybe I've still got a few good years left, so uh, I sort of missed it, and I wanted to get back in it. And uh, <laughs> whether it was right or wrong, I don't know, but I, I still like the game of basketball. <laughs> But it was a good win for our program. And uh, let me say this, all the fans that missed this ball game tonight missed one of the classic Clay County wins of all time. And if we're gonna have the ball club that we wanna have, the ball club that I'd like to go out of here with in my last year with these seniors, uh, I'd like to see this thing full of fans because you'll never find $3 worth of entertainment worth any more than this. And if you ain't got three, come on out here, we'll let you in for a buck and I'll pay the other two. Good win, boys, and a good effort. And let me say this. We can get back. We can play our defense better. Friday, Jackson County. Next Tuesday, Rockcastle. Ankle okay? I'm fine. How's the knee? Need ice? Uh, I'm fine. Right. Let's get in here. Need a hamburger? I need sleep. <laughs> Come on, boys. Let's get in here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get in here. Let's go. 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 I think when we got down to Florida, the guys really bought into what we were asking them to do. We beat uh, the number three team in the country at the time, Artesia from Lake Lakewood, California. Uh, played with one of the top teams in Pennsylvania, beat them. Um, beat one of the best teams from Washington, D.C., Coolidge. And then in the finals, it was an all-Kentucky final. We lost to Scott County. You know you're in trouble when you pull up and, you know, three blocks from the gym you can't find a parking spot. You know, you would think these things don't mean anything in December. You know, you got to wait till March till basketball is meaningful. But in Kentucky, you get a packed gym with two great teams and it, and it means the world that night. You just sit there thinking, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Everybody needs to accept their roles now. Guards, take care of the ball. Wait for the big man. Well, and Andrew, y'all can't play any worse. And I know you're going to step it up because I know the character you two have. You're not damn quitter. In the Scott County game, uh, Coach kind of let me have it at halftime. And that gave me a little bit of motivation because it made me realize he still had confidence in me to, you know, go out there and improve on my game and, you know, still make a difference in that game. So it helped me. No, we got these guys where we want them. Because right now it's a one-point game. I'm telling you what they're saying. Let's get this game up tempo. That's what they're saying. And I'm telling you, let's not. We, we beat our 
ourselves. I mean, I hope you all can, can recognize that fact. Now, let's learn from this experience, guys. Let's learn. Second half, we did a much better job of not pushing the ball out of control. I, I say this and I mean this. Scott County, they can't get that much better, guys, but we can, and every day we do. And I promise you, these teams here are starting to fear us. I want you to do this, guys. At times, I show a lack of class. I say things I shouldn't say, and I act like a fool. The next five seconds, you'll say enough words. Keep your head up. Keep a positive attitude. We beat ourselves. When we walk out of here, it's nobody's fault but our own fault. And if I hear anybody say otherwise, you're going to run for it. After we lost to Scott County in the Kentucky Holiday Classic, uh, a lot of the guys were very emotional. Will, in particular, uh, was very upset about the loss, and, and, and in all honesty, he should be. Uh, he did not play very well out there, and uh, knowing that if he had played just a little bit better, um, we potentially could have won, I think that he was very upset about that. I think a lot of times my, um, just my body language and stuff, it comes across that I'm upset that they yell at me, but really I'm upset with myself of, with what I've done. But uh. I, think, I think Will's having a, a very good year. Um, it might not be the type of year that he's wanting to have. I think a lot of times when, when seniors step into a season, they think, well, this is my year and I need to score points and I need to be the leading scorer. And I think your peers start to tell you that and maybe family members. And, and I think Will maybe had some higher expectations on, on going out there and, and scoring a little bit more. Other than shooting, I think, I think Will has really stepped his game up and uh, he's been a big key for us. Guys, in my mind, this is going to be a fun game today. I mean, if you're feeling nervous, you're feeling pressure, don't worry about it. There's none. There is no pressure on us whatsoever. They've beaten us twice. They're top five in the country, number one in the state. Hey, there's no pressure on us. They're sitting in their locker room right now with a 20-something game win streak. Hey, good luck. Play hard. Best team win. Have fun. Though. It's fun. Good luck. How you guys doing? Great. Good to see you guys. Everything's going good other than I have the flu right now, but I'm doing good. So when I get pissed off, I'm going to call you guys up. Hey, now. No, everything's fine. Not at all. Guys, I know. Yeah, I will. Shirt's got to be in. Well, we'll do that. I know that. I'm going to stay off you guys today and just have some fun. Ref, what did he do? What did he do? I'm asking you, what did he do? I can shoot anywhere from 25 to 30 feet. I mean, it, the coaches give me the freedom and the players don't mind me doing it. If you think about a shot, you're not going to hit it. You got to have the confidence where you feel like it's going in. If I go out and hit my first few shots, you know, I feel like I'm going to be on for the rest of the game because I get my confidence up, you know, especially in a big game. And I know that I'm going to hit the shots when, you know, when it counts. It's going to Jones. Hey, Jones. He shoots the three. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the ball game. Scott County wins. Oh. What a last second three point shot. By Ricky, basketball! Unbelievable! Go! Unbelievable! Good shooters will keep shooting, and the ball will go in eventually. I mean, you can miss your first six or seven shots, but then, you know, you can hit your next eight or nine. You know, you just got to keep shooting. If you stop shooting, you know, that's when your confidence level is going to go down. But, I mean, when I come down, I hit, you know, two or three three-pointers in a row. You know, I definitely feel like I'm in the zone. The next trip down the court, I'll, I'll come by half court, and, I mean, I, I want to shoot from right there. I mean, I just it feels it's just a great feeling because you feel like, you know, it's like you're on top of the world. I mean, you ain't gonna miss nothing, no matter where you shoot it, how many people's on you. Get him off him! <coughs> we have 16 minutes left of basketball. 16 minutes left to beat the number one team in the state.
good play. Now, I mean, that is such an awesome win. It shows a lot of character for you guys to come back after getting beat twice and winning that game. Now, understand this. The state tournament is just like this. You play morning, you got to come back and play tonight. It's great. We're preparing ourselves for a state championship here. So let's prepare correct. When you get home, get off your feet, eat something, get some rest. Fells, championship game at the Louisville Invitational Tournament, it doesn't get any better than this. So go out there and give everything you got. Let's do what we can do. Where? Right here. I'm telling you this, fellas, I, I believe this. If we can beat the number one team in the state and the number five team in the country and beat a team like Artesian, all the teams we did in Florida, we can win a state championship. We can win it. If you're at the top of your game, we'll take anybody in the damn state of Kentucky. Let's go. Let's go, boys. So right at the top of the game. One more. Ready? Hey. One, And she two, starts eight, to die. Let's go. One, one two, three. Go. Right. Let's go. Well, we won in places where there were no showers. We won in places where there were no restrooms. Uh, we've dressed in places where there was a pop bellied stove over in the corner. Be sure that you don't bend over or drop your shoe and get turned the wrong way because that thing's red hot. <laughs> so uh, those are just part of the game. I watch a lot of coaches um, on TV and stuff, and they say, hey, you don't far up for a game because you get too high for one game. You'll be down for the next. We don't, we don't accept that theory at all. We want to be sky high every game that we walk on the floor, come in with the hardest and the best we've got. And if we lose, I don't care if there's tears in the dressing room. I want to see it hurt. Well, I talk to you, listen carefully. Now, this team plays a lot better over here than they do on the road. They've been playing well over here. If you don't believe that your players can win in one, in one second, They'll sense that. They'll read that into you. And the moment that they think you as their leader have lost faith in them or you as their leader think that they can't win, you've lost. All right, region's going to be played on this floor. This team is going to be in the region. You need to set an example in their mind that if we draw them in the region, they may play well with somebody else, but they don't play well with you. You've got a chance right now to get better and better and better. Well, when we hit March, we're right at the top of our game for the district, regional, and state. We've got eight or nine games left. Make every one of them an opportunity to move your game up a step to make it better than it was the day before. And I got a feeling we're going to really start tonight. How do you feel? All right, let's get ready. Come in here. All right, you know what we're doing? Let's go do it. Y'all ready? All right. One, two, three, four. Bobby is as intense, uh, get back. He's coming. active. Uh, into a game as any coach I've ever seen. Get up, get up, get up, Stephen! Get ready! He ain't got nobody to throw to! He's uh, stomping, uh, yelling, pointing, Let's cajoling, go. Let's go. Uh, berating, uh, and that's just the referee. But he needed him when he started to drive. He needed him? Yeah, when he first made his move. We get killed, we get killed on every shot. We shot a foul shot in. Get out now, get out, eat him up. He can get salty at times, and uh, he can be uh, encouraging at times, and he knows how to do it all at the right time. I'm out. 20 seconds. Yeah. You gonna come with the guy? Come with him. Don't come drag him to where he gets a three-pointer. Get up. Yes, it's your fault. You wasn't ready. You're tired, right? You want to come out. All right, then you get down and play defense. Go down and rest a little on offense. Uh, I've seen him, you know, scold a player uh, coming off the court, but by the time the guy gets to the bench, he's got his arms around him, you know, uh, giving him a, a good pep talk. If you leave 42, he will score every time. Do, wait right on the bucket, and if he catches, then you're inside. Usually, to be quite honest with you, you become a better ball club by losing, as long as you do not lose very often.
get on the boat we want. Oh, usually it will be four or five o'clock in the morning before I go to bed the night after a game. A lot of coaches can't sleep the night before a game. I sleep like a baby the night before. As soon as I think I've done everything that I can do to have my team ready. First thing come to my mind, you know, just hope that he become a, a basketball player, because that's what I was, and that's what his mother was, and that's that's what I was hoping that he'd be, and, and which he he turned out to be a good. One. This would be the last time we'd be on the floor, you know. I just had to probably won't sleep none all night tonight, but you know it's come to an end, and he's had a great three years and four years, and you know I just hope he just can look back and realize one day, you know what he's done to this town, because, you know, I mean, he's done well. Rub, 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 It's the time of year when everybody gets excited about basketball here in this basketball crazy state, and have we got a show for you. I'm Dave Baker. Thanks for joining us on this special edition of 27 News First Afternoon. And for those of you around the state who are joining us on the statewide network, we welcome you as well. Today, high school teams from around Kentucky will earn their fate as we draw for this year's Sweet 16 tournament brackets. There was so much curiosity on who would be playing who in the Sweet 16. Uh, you know, the regional powers wanted to maybe get an idea of who they were going to be playing that we thought we would broadcast the, the draw for the Sweet 16. To my knowledge, there's not another state that airs the draw to their tournament on, on live TV. Four years ago, we switched to our current lottery ball system to where we have a machine that, with air that shoots the number of balls, one for each of the 16 regions up, and it's just a random luck of the draw who will be playing who. Champs of Region 4 taking on the winners from Region 8. All those Scott County people <laughs> making that short drive from Georgetown again in the middle of the afternoon. Scott County, of course, as you mentioned, coming in the defending champs. You're taking a look there at the MVP of the Sweet 16, Rick Jones, who had a phenomenal tournament. Uh, you take Jones, you take A.W. Hamilton, uh, and then you add uh, Scott Hundley to the mix, and it's no wonder they've been uh, atop the rankings for most of the year. Playing great basketball. They lost to uh, Ballard in the uh, LIT, but... Uh, they're still the, I think they're still the team to beat. Uh, hey, well, Mike put it on my back, didn't he? <laughs> they were a team to beat, man. 300 schools out there that, that, that want to beat you. <laughs> oh, man. Gosh, oh, man. Second game, Region 11. The champions from the Lexington and Central Kentucky region. What a war that's going to be. Against Region 13 with all those folks pouring out of the mountains. Uh, you know, Bobby Keith was there last year with Clay County. He's got right. most of those guys back. Two great guards, and uh, you got already got a top half of that bracket that's loaded. If you can take five kids and give any coach in America five players, and you'll probably put your life on the line. I mean, you take all emotion out now, it's survival. You put, and you had, to, you had to pick on a winning team. I'd take Bobby Keith, because <laughs> he figures some way to beat you. <laughs> I, I'm talking about any coach in America at any level. Seventh region, Ballard has probably been the uh, strongest team, but I think uh, Louisville is pretty wide open in the seventh region. Manuel, Fern Creek, uh, St. X, Trinity, there's a bunch of teams there that come out, but I think Ballard's the team to beat. Thanks so much for all of you for being with us, and hope you all get out to the Boys and Girls Sweet 16. We'll see you at the games. Gosh, well, that's about, I did the same thing last year, didn't I? Check that machine out. <laughs> I believe mean, they got that machine rigged in some way. I mean, they lowered that Wednesday up.
and what are you doing? You're just laying down, laying down. Then we got nine turnovers, seven in the first quarter. Walk into this place. They're ready to play. They're hungry. Now, you've got 16 minutes. You can go out there and lay down like you did in the first half, like a bunch of little babies. They're hustling. They're getting every loose ball. We're not coming up with them. You, I didn't see anybody get on the floor. Did, it, did one player get on the floor, coaches? You see one guy? Good. I think the most pressure-packed, toughest game of any during a season is the regional finals. If you make it to the state tournament, some teams can live on that, some schools can live on that, some communities can live on that for years and years. And just getting there once, the anticipation of possibly living that dream, I think, it, it is what puts uh, the madness in March. big smile broke across his face and it was watch, looking at his teammates and you could just tell the, that it felt like the pressure was off for a few days at least. Uh, from parents, from certainly the coaching staff, uh, from school administration, from media, I do think that the pressures do exist and although you may attempt and we may attempt as families to, uh, to push those aside, the kids I do feel it, and I, I think that I can recall back to several conversations at the dinner table where, where Will would have just as soon been talking about uh, a magazine, a movie, uh, uh, anything other than basketball, just to get away from it uh, for a moment. So, yeah, I think they're real. Five, four, three, two. Good morning, students. This is Dad. Hi, We're broadcasting live from WBH this morning. Ballard High School home of the 7th Region Men's Basketball Champions. We've got lots of news for you this morning, so let's get started, Ms. Montgomery. And our top story of the day is a congratulations to our boys basketball Bruins from the counseling office. We're behind you all the way, guys, and we'll see, see you at Rupp Arena. Students, if you would like to purchase a 7th Region Champ shirt, we will be in the cafeteria starting today at lunch. Tickets will go on sale today and tomorrow. They will be $6. We will also, as Ms. Montgomery mentioned, have t-shirts for sale. They will be $10. So it can be rather expensive, I know, but uh, I think this is a one time in your lifetime, maybe, that you'll get to experience something as great as going to Rupp Arena for a state tournament. I like pressure and I like high expectations because I think it causes you to rise to the challenge. Is do we have a shot to win the state championship? We certainly do. We have a shot this year to win it. We're good enough to win it. Um, but at the same time, I don't feel pressure to win a state championship. Yeah, there are going to be people out there that think, you know, if Ballard High School doesn't win a state championship, that coach and that coaching staff are horrible. They've got all this talent, and they have to win it. And I'm sure there are people out there that think that. And maybe even some parents and some people within the school. State champs on three, one, two, three, state champs! We'll take buses up there, we'll sell t-shirts, we'll sell a million tickets, the band will go, everyone is a part of it. And that's what every school likes to have, occasions like that when everyone has a common cause. And in this case, the common cause is to win a state championship.
this time in Kentucky is, is pretty much madness. I mean, it's, and especially in small towns. Last year, talk about madness, Georgetown College won the national championship in AIA. We win the state championship, and UK wins the national championship. That was crazy. I'm just very proud of, you know, being from Scott County. They won it last year. I'm hoping they win it again this year. It's just a time when everybody can come together and something in common. You grow up in Kentucky, you got to love basketball. It's just the way of life. Special Sweet 16 Special from the basketball capital of the world. Right here. I still remember the floor was so shiny, it looked like you could eat off of it. And when you were shooting, it was hard to get your shot down because the backboards were just so clear. It's all those people there watching you and stuff, big people from big towns, and it was great. Because that's where you want to be. That's where you dream of being from the time you're a small, small boy. If you want to play basketball, now you want to play in Freedom Hall or Rupp Arena. You want to play in the best and the biggest against the best. The early 80s, mid 80s is when the Sweet 16 really came alive again, and I think Bobby Keith had a had a big role in that. He and his Clay County teams uh, re-energized the, the Sweet 16. Uh, they they made it uh, a big event again. They made it an event where you know you have 20,000 fans coming to Rupp Arena to watch high school basketball. Until the buzzer went off, I thought we were going to win the game anyway, no matter how many points we were down. Coach, there had been rumors, of course, about you, this may be being your last game. Is there, have you thought about any of that? or? Uh, I thought about the last game. No, I was figuring on playing one on Friday. <laughs> I was hoping to play one Friday and maybe a couple Saturday, but I don't, unless we have an exhibition out here, I don't think I'll get to. It's unlike any basketball crowd you'll see anywhere because uh, the old the old timers come out of habit, out of reverence, out of uh, curiosity, and, and the young kids come mainly to have a good time, and uh, I think everybody gets what they come for. <laughs> There's never a game too far. You know, if you can make it, uh, you go. You support your team. Got it? Got it? It's a tornado night. And here comes that big blue. Let's roll, blue. Let's go. Yeah. Give it love, baby. Give it love, baby. A long pass up to George Wilson. In the lane, right side, missed it. Rebound comes back to Wilson. He puts it up, no good, but a foul. I told you he was a glass eater. He got that rebound laying on his stomach, huh? George Wilson! Way to go, baby! 
to Jones at the top of the circle. Off a pick from Wilson. Three-pointer, left wing, no good. Rebound, Wilson. Left baseline, reverse layup, good. Boy, he goes after that ball when he goes up on the glass. He's got seven rebounds. Because he doesn't have a lot of size, and I relate to that. Because when I was playing high school ball, you know, I, I was I was thin rail, but I, I had fairly good leaping ability, uh, good post up position, and quick as a cat inside. George Wilson, free throw line right, drives leaner, no good, but a foul as he split two Fleming. Intentional foul! Shoot two! Shoot two! Shoot as many as you want! No, he didn't shoot two. McKee across the timeline, right wing, three pointers blocked. George Wilson pulls it off. Throws it out to Jones and almost threw it away. Jones chases it down. Still in backcourt. Throws it across court to George Wilson. He'll drive it across the line. Ahead to Carruthers. Cross court, Chris Wilson. Wide open. Laid it in. That'll do it. Yeah. Ball game, baby. First round over with. Moving on. A lot of people tell me I ought to sit down, but, it, it, you know, it's just I can't. I, I don't want to. Next round. Excuse me, sir. I know you got bruises. I'm sorry. At a game like this, a really big requirement for being drum major is to have a loud voice. Ridge Park closes out Perry County Okay, run it again, this time all the way through. Finish. Let's go again. I haven't been much of a vocal guy. Uh, I'm usually smaller than everybody else, so <laughs> using my voice doesn't really help. Come on, Ben Harris, let's go. Bring it in. Bring it in. Hey, serious note. Serious note. Hey, y'all. Hey. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for, all right? The beginning of what we've been waiting for, okay? Oh. <laughs> Come on. Stay champs all three. One, two, three, stay champs! A lot of times I've really held feelings in and held my voice down just because I don't really think people will respond to me that way, but I think they don't have a choice anymore, and I don't really either, so <laughs> it's something I have to do. Now, go out there, and we want to take it serious, guys, and we're playing for a state championship. At the same time, enjoy it. It's something I've thought about since I was a little kid. You know, I want this responsibility. I'd love to put a team on my shoulders and carry them all the way. So I think I'm ready to do it. Will's basketball game has gotten so much better throughout the season. Will was very frustrating to coach for for the beginning of the season. He had a couple of little things that kept him from being the type of player that we needed to help us to get to our ultimate goal. Will decided that he was going to improve those two areas, and those two areas were to shoot the basketball better and to make better decisions. Guys, we can score all day long, but we got to stop them, exactly. Hands up, Will. Hands up. One, two, three, four. Good job. Side board. Hands up.
That's where he wants to go, Will. Three, you gotta get up on and make him four, uncomfortable. Count! Five! five, five six! Five, yeah. Good! Good job, Will! Good job, Seven. Seven seconds. Most coaches coach the way that they play or played. When, when I was in high school, I was not a very skilled player. I was the type of guy that just worked hard. Sam, just get the ball and settle down. It's a turnover, Richard! Bless, no. I'm getting ready to kill him. Good job, Brandon. I don't think winning a championship is about showing up with the most talent and uh, walking home with a trophy. Mac is just so killing me tonight. I swear, I'm gonna, I hope he fouls out. I think winning a state championship or any championship is about showing up and working hard and giving everything that you've got. Well, for police officers, we really enjoy things like this, and we don't get to really watch the sport that much, but just getting to work with the crowd, this is a happy crowd. They're here to have a good time, so that makes our job really easy. So this is really an enjoyable assignment. The officers really uh, want this assignment, so we're really picky about who we let work this assignment. We want our best people down here all week long. Yes, sir. Three up the left wing, good! Let's go Cardinals, let's go! Let's go Cardinals! And a steal, A.W. Hamilton picked the pocket of Campbell, drives and laid it in. crazy and then you know he talks the whole game he, he thinks he knows the game he's a commentator he's coach he's he's the referee Johnson work look at Johnson work baby that's what I'm talking about give me love baby give me love baby give me love baby yes sir yes sir you know jumping up you never know knocking your coke out of your hand but at the same time if you love the game you gotta love what this guy brings to the game and, and the excitement that he has for it Oh, man. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen now? This is for the marbles, baby. No turnovers? Come on. Oh, my goodness. What's he doing? What's he doing? Oh, we're not gonna get a shot up. Come on. 21.
of y'all have seen the movie Hoosiers? <coughs> Probably everybody's seen it. See, they make movies like that about small schools that come out and accomplish some things. We finally made it. It's been 26 years since our school's ever made it. Just to have this chance to come to Sweet 16 is just amazing. I mean. You better respect this team. And I don't know if Coach Henry told you all this, but fans are out there, and if you give Pikeville a little confidence, all of a sudden, guess what? The crowd's going to start to cheer for Pikeville. The underdog, the little Hickory High School, just like up in Indiana. If anything, is going to be our stumbling block. Um, it'll probably be just our lack of emotion. I think sometimes when we're not ready to play, we, we come out flat, and sometimes we get a little selfish and try to do it on our own. Uh, There we are, um, Friday night in Rupp Arena playing a basketball game, and people are arguing on the court with each other and talking back to coach. And you know, there's a lot of tension in the team, and he didn't like that at all. He didn't want us, whether we won or lost, to present ourselves like that. I'm gonna take three minutes, and I'm gonna hate it and then I'm gonna to start to enjoy it, and I want you all to do the same. And it wasn't about effort, it was about more than just that. Going out there, when things get tough, start finger pointing, start blaming people, start getting selfish. You know, I wanna enjoy it, and I'd like for us to enjoy it, but when that's the case, no. No, we, we can't. Because I want what's good about basketball. I want the positive things, the teamwork, guys coming together. We won this game because we had more talent than them. That's bottom line. More talent. And then we're out there on the court in front of 10,000 people arguing. Arguing. I don't want to coach a damn team that does it. I don't want to coach one. And I won't. And I'll sit there next time and I'll quit. Because I will not coach your sorry asses when you argue on the court. Teams like that, they don't win championships. Yeah, they beat Pikeville, but they don't win championships. And tonight, you guys better mend fences. You better make up. And if you're not man enough to, then I don't want you on this team. If you're not man enough to go out and say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have reacted that way, my fault. Let's come together. Because if we don't, guys, no, it's not if we don't. If you don't, it's over. Don't show up tomorrow, because I'll tell you we'll lose. We can't win a state championship divided. There's nothing wrong with conflict again. It's part of relationships. I'm learning that. Me and my wife, we argue. Now, positive. It's a tough game when you're supposed to beat somebody like that. It's a difficult game because you can never do good enough. Coach Renner wasn't satisfied at halftime when we're up three. But guess what? If we're playing Oak Hill and we're up three at halftime, man, I'm in here excited, okay? So I've got to learn to settle down a little bit, not get so upset, and not put so much expectations on you all. But I expect bigger things because I know you're all capable of doing it, okay? Didn't play a great game, hey, but we're in the final four. Got Henderson County in the morning. If we can take care of business tomorrow, come back together, play as a team, we'll be playing for a state championship, guys. A state championship. Man, I've dreamed about this since I was a little kid. Okay, and you all had this opportunity down to four teams. Anything can happen, okay? So be thrilled with that, fellas. Be thrilled with that. Let's go. Bring it in. Get everybody in here. All I want here is positive things, fellas, positive things. Forget I'm a maniac and I'm an idiot. I coached a bad game. You played a bad game. We all sucked. Who cares? We're playing in the Final Four. Right there at that moment, we realized what we needed to do to win the state tournament. One, two, three, run! Yesterday we played about half of the game. If we put the whole thing together, uh, we'd be, we'd be all right. <laughs> Second large crowd ever been in the room around. Yeah. Yep. All sorts of people out there yesterday. Well, they said team people. They said scalpers were selling tickets out on the street mm -hmm. for up to hundred dollars a ticket. No kidding. Yeah. Sisley boy played pretty good ball yesterday. Played good defensive game. Yeah. yeah real good. Played real good game defensively. I know it's.
his dad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he works hard and he plays hard. And, you know, we'll be all right this morning. A Saturday morning in the state of Kentucky. No place would anybody rather be than sharing a basketball game uh, of that caliber. And, and, I, and I get a tingle uh, when, when, I, when I talk about it. Throw by Scott County. A three-point lead for the Tornado. 3.40 to go. The defending state champs need to rally. Here is Hamilton driving into the paint. Left side it goes. The three by Wallace. In and out. Rebound tipped up no good by Hamilton. And coming up for the loose ball is Brett Jones. Jones to Chris Wilson. Alley-oop and a dunk by Brothers. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. from the line. He lets it go, and he nails it right in the bottom. 64-61. All right, here comes Rick Jones for Scott County. Left side to Alsa. Pierces three out of the corner. Good move! Oh, man! Alsa with another three. 64-64. Jones lobs to George Wilson. Drives into the paint. Puts it up, and no good! We're going to overtime. Inbounds to Jones. 11 lead changes in this game, eight ties. We're in overtime. Tillman by one. Jones with a three. Good! Rick Jones! My, oh my! He's got five threes in this game. 70 to 68, Scott County. Kelly out to Brett Jones for his three. Off the back of the rim and over the top of the board. It's Scott County. It's over! Scott County wins it. 78 to 75 in overtime. Man. You know, basketball it develops character. It makes boys out of men. You know, they'll take this with them for the rest of their lives, playing in a rough arena. I love being the mascot. It's probably the most enjoyable thing I've done in high school. Yeah, if I, if I had full freedom, just had the space I need and didn't have anybody restricting my act, I would, I'd have a flag. You know, I could run the flag around the court, and I have this great front flip. Drives the crowd crazy. The front flip, of course, it usually end up on the back side sometimes. But I think they like that just as much. It's exciting. It's exciting for me. It's definitely something, it's only you, you know. You've got your football teams, your basketball teams, your cheerleading squad, but there's no mascot team, it's just one person. And that, really, that, that fits my personality a lot because I kind of like to stand out and be the center of attention. So, it's just me. Since when can you stick a forearm in the guy's back when he's posting up? Hey, hey, let's get it back. Let's go, let's go. Hey, let's go. <laughs> she was there. <laughs> Barnes chased it down on the left corner and sank the three. Oh, golly. <laughs> Here's a shot out of the corner. Good. Will Barton for three. Barton caught him down at three. Barnes quickly the other way. He launches a three too hard off the back of the rim. Knight with the rebound.
It's halftime in the final four session of the Sweet 16. Got 16 minutes of basketball left. It's either 16 minutes of basketball in this game or it's 16 minutes of basketball in your season. Guys, go out there and give everything that you have. Come together as a group. Come together. Get the ball inside. They cannot stop us. Circle for three. Yes. Uh oh, this team is this team is caught fire, Tom. Ballard with its first lead since it was six to four. The Bruins 44, Henderson County 43. Great job getting yourself in this position. Okay, now their inside game is getting weaker. So get it inside. Sets and shoots. Missed it. Rebound to Bender of Ballard. The Bruins down one in front court. Grader backs in over to Bender. Left wing Parton wide open. Doesn't want the shot. Floats it over to Grader about 30 feet off the right side. Into the lane. It's Childs who's checked in for Knight. Over to Parton. Down on the block to Wilkinson. Backs in. Spins baseline. Six footer. Hit the side of the board. He gets it back. Follows it in. Left side Miller. Works it against Bender. Miller started to throw it to Stone. Instead, he'll take it on the dribble. Go around this man, a collision. Childs in the deck with no ball. Fisher in the left corner. Shake and bake. Three. Go! No, it's a two. It's a two. He was inside the arc. Florida and City of Palms tournament, and it's ha it's right before the game, and they play my old Kentucky home. Yeah. Just such an awesome feeling, and we were playing Scott County, and guess what, fellas? Here we are, we're playing for the state championship. Well, I hurt my knee or hurt my thigh in the Anderson County game. I, it was late in the game. I drove baseline, and um, their guard, who was guarding me, kind of got me with his knee in my thigh, and it did. It hurt a little bit, um, but then when I went back to the hotel, just kind of relaxed for a while and fell asleep. I woke up and, and I couldn't straighten out. I couldn't bend it. It was just kind of stuck in a position. I mean, it was swollen. It was looked like my thigh was bent out this way because it was just so swollen on the outside. And it scared me because I wasn't sure if I was going to get to play or not. Well, when I saw him walking down the steps at Rupp Arena, because you had to walk out down all those steps to get to the training room, I'm just like, something's really wrong here. He wasn't able to put any weight on it. And I told him straight up, I'm just like, this may, you may not be able to play. I said, we'll work on it for the next hour and a half see what we can do, and I mean, Will basically said, I will play. <laughs> I said, that's fine, but as long as you're not going to do any more damage than what is already happening. I could see in the kids' eyes that when, when it was questionable about whether or not Will would play, that the kids were um, uptight about it. 
And uh, when, when Will was able to play that night, I think it gave the kids the confidence and, and the motivation uh, to just go out there and play their hearts out. Please take advantage of this opportunity, but at the same time, go out there and enjoy it. This is something special. This is a memory of a lifetime, and don't be out there with scowls on your face. Have fun, but at the same time, be focused. Coaches, anything to add? One of the great moments, I think, in any coach's life is when you stand down there on the floor before the game starts. That gone if it won't almost bring tears to your eyes when you stand there and you know you've worked this long to have a shot at a state championship and it's lying right here in front of you in the next hour and a half. And any coach worth his salt wants to be in that particular spot. We gotta keep meeting like this now. This is where we gotta keep meeting. I love, I love. I told everybody, I said, I, 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 there's nobody else I'd rather play here. The sun shines bright on my own. took over. I wasn't really thinking about my leg too much. The pain that was there before the game wasn't there during the game. shots this afternoon. Wow. Rick Jones showing his range, pull it up from the hash mark as Scott County gets its first tray. 31-28 is our score as Louisville Ballard leads Scott County. Fells, I know Will's hurting, Brandon's hurting right now, but I'll tell you what, we're 16 minutes away from, from a state championship. If we play like that, this half. Inside by the Bruins as Bender gets the two. He now gets into double figures with his 10th point. Jones short on that jumper. And everything going Ballard's way right now. They're looking to set the high screen, but Grader goes the opposite way. And Parton is wide open for a three. Over the last couple of minutes, Scott County has fallen into a bear trap as the Bruins have gone up by 10 and Billy Hicks takes a 20. Keep being patient. Exactly. Every possession. Stay focused. and putting them down, and yeah, the Bruins are in control, but there's one quarter left. Guys, we outscored them that quarter 21 to four. This team is capable of exploding. You have to be mentally tough. Layups, seconds of solid basketball. That was 30 seconds. You're 234 away from a damn state championship. Okay? Let's go.
is from Ballard. Welcome to Ballard. <laughs> Are they going to expect this every year? I don't know. We started something. Oh, wow. This is a dream. Probably be a top ten team in the state with what we have coming back. Yeah. We got the Hundley kids, Scott Hundley, and uh I know that uh, the greatest moments of my life will always be the years that I spent as coach of Clay County High School. And I was fortunate enough to get to coach there 35 years and fulfill a dream. And most of the good memories that I have in my life are, revolve around Clay County High School, Clay County basketball. I think a lot of people go through life and never, never can experience the thrill of taking a team to the state tournament, standing out on the rough arena floor and playing for all the marbles. Uh, we'll have some lonely nights this winter, I'm sure of that. Uh, but probably like last winter, there was a few nights I didn't sleep so well. I'm sure I'll sleep better this year. Ball game. Ball game. Ball game. Ball game. I'm on your side, baby. Stay again. Let's get him quick, OK? You're a good ball player. Baby, don't go nowhere. Jerry, Mario. Hey, where you going? Now, guys, I kid you not, we're fourth in the country. Do we have a chance to win a high school national championship? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But it's not going to be because we look good. It's not going to be because Alan Houston played here. It's going to be because we work hard. And some people can say, well, gosh darn, isn't that awful high expectations? Isn't that pressure? Heck no, we deserve it. We deserve it as long as we work hard. One, two, three, let's go out to the track. Let's go. Everybody line up around the track. 